So, hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I will try to explain why the model of the M1A2 tank in the War Thunder made by Gaijin is wrong. And it is wrong. So, I will start with the um, visuals on the model first. So we can assume that this is the baseline M1A2 Abrams model as it's uh, described by the developers. So where do things go wrong? Let's start with the turret rear. First thing, the bustle rack extension should not be here. The bustle rack extension was added in uh, 2000, uh, 2000s. So only M1A2 SEP variants have it and some modern M1A1 variants like the M1A1 SA and the M1A1 FEP. The baseline M1A2 didn't have it, as far as I know. Another problem, these, uh, this armored box. It contains here, and the model says clearly, that this is the uh, VCSU, or Vapor Compression System Unit. It's the part of the TMS, or Thermal Management System, or if you wish, um, air conditioning system used in the M1A2 SEP variants. The baseline M1A2 never had the VCSU or uh, TMS in general. Um, in this place, the true baseline M1A2 should have uh, the external axillary power unit or EAPU. Another problem. Doesn't matter if this is the EAPU or VCSEU, you need to connect it to the vehicle electrical power. It's done via cables connecting here, and they're covered uh, in similar looking armored, uh, lightly armored sheet or a tun tunnel, if you want to call it that way. So, not present here, this is wrong. Another thing on the turret, the Commander Cupola, the ICWS or Improved Commander Weapon Station. The cupola should not move with the machine gun. The cupola is fixed. It only faces forward and the only thing that is uh, rotating around the cupola is the machine gun flex mount. Nothing else. Okay. So I think this is all for the turret right now. Let's move to the hull because it's also wrong. So we can see here the plate. This plate is present only on the M1 A2 SEB V1 and some M1 A2 SEB V2 tanks. And this metal sheet is uh, protection for the under armor axillary power unit uh, exhaust. However, basic M1A2 never had the UAAPU placed here. Because if you have UAAPU, you do not have a fuel tank here. And as we can see, there is a fuel uh, filler uh, cap cover. So it means that here is the fuel tank. Besides, if there will, will be UAAPU, uh, we'll have access hatches here on top to it. Um, uh, the later batches of the M1A2 SEB V2 didn't have the UAAPU because it was discovered it, it was too weak to uh, power up all the computer systems on the tank and was replaced uh, by the Hawker battery packs uh, until the M1A2 SEB V3 that finally received the UAAPU that is uh, powerful enough to power up during a silent watch all uh, computer systems and other subcomponents like uh, active protection system uh, of the tank during the silent watch. However, the basic M1A2 
should not have it. And the final element that should not be here, this little box. The basic M1A2 at least mostly, so we speak about most, about most of the production batches, maybe besides the few last ones, didn't have uh, this box. And what's this box? Is? This box contains the rear slave receptacle. So it pretty much is a connection to any exterior power source. So let's say we have a diesel generator here and our tank is on the silent watch protecting the base. Why it should use its own fuel or its own batteries? Uh, we can simply use the diesel generator standing somewhere in the base connected via cable to the tank and power up its systems externally. Or we can use the tank <clears throat> to power up different vehicle, for example, other tank. The uh, it, it's added here so the crew doesn't need to open heavy covers to access the battery packs. They're placed here uh, behind the uh, right side rear uh, fuel tank. So you only open this lightweight box and connect the tank. So it's much, much easier and comfortable to do. So, yeah, so these are the things that make this model a non-existing vehicle. It's like a hybrid between the M1A2, M1A2 SEP. Um, so um, it should not be like this. Okay, so what other things are wrong the armor is wrong and you will ask why well gaijin is basing uh, their estimations for the armor protection based on the so-called swedish leak documents however if you read the docu not only the documents but also what the author of these documents uh, on his web page written uh, and what uh, English language sources written, um, I will provide them. Uh, the Swedes never got either to test the actual US armor for the M1A2. The Swedes never got data on that armor. And what's even more important, the US never provided the Swedish uh, officials with the data on the export armor package that will be provided for the tank if the Swedes will choose it. Despite the fact that the Swedes were considering to use their own developed uh, armor package for the tank. So what Swedish documents contain are only estimations, guesstimations, what the Swedes were thinking uh, the armor the US would provide them, the export armor package, to them. And this is important, it was export armor package, not the heavy armor package that the US M1A2s have. So, gauging is wrong here. Um, of course, the problem is, okay, if we don't use the Swedish estimations, what we use, well, nothing because the us really is uh, classifying everything containing the uh, m1 series armor protection um, so we don't know what the protection is even for the export models we can assume something uh, for example for the export variants for the arab states based on the actual conflicts for example i seen a footage of uh, a video of the Iraqi M1A1M that uses the export armor package being hit by the Metis M80 GM. So if we know what pro uh, penetration capabilities have Metis M, this is rated around 900 to 950 millimeters of uh, RHA penetration and the tank front, uh, turret front withstand the, this, protected the armor protected the tank we can assume that the protection is higher than 950 uh, millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor uh, equivalent.
However, we also know that uh, Cornet was uh, Cornet ATGM was capable of penetrating the front of the Iraqi M1A1 tank, at least from the footage we could see. So we can assume that the protection is less than what the Cornet is rated for, officially. So if Cornet is rated to, let's say, 1,200 uh, millimeters of RHA, then we can assume that the export armor package provides roughly uh, average protection versus chemical energy projectiles at around 1000 millimeters of RHA equivalent. Okay, so if we talk about the armor, uh, I also know that this is false. Uh, and it's false also for the M1A1. Uh, the M1A1 was the first uh, M1 Abrams tank that had something we can call hybrid armor. It was not only this NATO tank that got the hybrid armor. Uh, a lot of uh, NATO tanks started to, in the late 80s, from 1985 to, uh, to the 90s, receive the hybrid armor, so it's uh, NERA plus something behind NDRA. Most it's still ceramic steel packages or something like that. Uh, of course, there are no documents for this, but uh, when it comes to the, this, uh, this solution, I am fairly certain that my source is correct uh, and it's trustworthy to, to say at least. Same goes for the turret. Uh, so if Gaging would claim that there is a DU in the armor, then it cannot have 800 millimeters of NERA. Some thickness of NERA must be uh, sacrificed for uh, making space for layers of the depleted uranium encased in steel layers. So all of this is completely wrong. Uh, I understand why they do this, because this is the only data they have. Uh, and obviously nobody that actually knows and have actual documentation will give the documentation to them. But overall, uh, it's wrong. The same goes with the M1A1, uh, the M1 IP, the M1 uh, for example, 400 millimeters uh, quoted protection for the turret. Uh, uh, often people do not understand that the, when the U.S. provides, uh, U.S. government provides protection for the tanks, it's uh, it's for the, for example for the turret front, it's not straight on. It's more or less at a perpendicular angle, so at angle that is at, uh, as much as possible not favorable for uh, the armor. So if you take the M1, basic M1, the 400 millimeters of protection will be at more or less this angle, not straightforward. And protection of hull and turret should be roughly equal for the basic M1. Of course, in the next models, both hull and turret were improved, but the Turret got, got more improvement than the hull, simply because the turrets have a thicker, uh, uh, have larger armor cavities, more armor fits there. So yeah, so this is uh, how it looks like. Mm. What else? Well, I think besides the things that I pointed out. Um, Otherwise, the model is more or less correct. Okay, so in the description, I will provide the screenshot of one of the documents and I will copy paste uh, the other document with the link to it because it's not uh, easily available through the net. I only have the link to it and to the source material and, to, uh, and the text to quote it. So, okay, mm, I hope this will be interesting. Uh, it will clear some things. 
Um, oh, and by the way, the mass of the vehicle, actually from most sources I've seen, uh, the mass of the M1A2 should be 62 and a half metric tons. Okay, so hopefully this will be interesting uh, for any watcher and uh, well, see you in some of my other videos. See ya!